members of the York family. I'm so very honored to have been chosen as one of this year's Bryden Award winners. My congratulations to the others who are being celebrated here tonight. It's truly humbling to me am among you and among the other Bryden winners of years past. I knew Bruce Bryden. He was a great guy, and these awards are a truly fitting tribute to his pride in the university. There are a few days when I don't think about how grateful I am to have had a career at York. I've thought recently about how I would have responded if, when I was a student, I'd been asked to fill out one of those endemic surveys on student engagement. I doubt I would have filled it out. It was the 60s after all. I certainly would have, wouldn't have said that I'd come to university to prepare me for a job. I was very young, at loose in the big city, and it was the time of sex, drugs, rock and roll, politics and poetry. My goal for university was to learn something about all of the above. Fortunately, I was about 2,500 miles away from my parents. <laughs> Fortunately, also, politics and poetry were on the curriculum. You could say that York provided me with a rich experiential education. The local hero is not an award any individual, any individual can claim to have received on her own. I've always been part of teams that have worked together on the university's behalf and without many others, I would not have had the many opportunities and rich experiences that I have had. I don't know when it happened, maybe on the day I returned to York, but working here has always been so much more than a job. I have had an opportunity to think about an unparalleled variety of legal issues, to work along some side, alongside of some of the best lawyers in the country in addressing this, these issues, and to wield swords from time to time, people like Andrew. I've had the privilege of working with our Board of Governors and Senate and have come to understand the intricacies of collegial self-governance, which, like democracy, may be flawed, but we don't want the alternative. I've repeatedly been challenged to try different things and to try things differently, to redefine the possible. There have been times when I've been scared stiff, like now, and times when I've really been overwhelmed with a sense of accomplishment and pride in the institution. And I've been called all kinds of names, from Pollyanna to my personal favorite, a pit bull in a prom dress. <laughs> but one thing I've never... <laughs> one thing I've never been is bored. York is like a hive of humming bees. It's got amazing energy, it gives off a lot of heat, and it gives off a lot of noise. But there's always the possibility of getting stung. But in the middle, when you get through all of that, honey. There's so much happening at the place that it's impossible to know all of what's going on. But I had an experience last week I want to share with you. I was at the Authors' Festival at Harborfront, and I heard a woman by the name of Sarah Gruen, the author of a famous book, Water for Elephants, speak about her new novel, Ape Land. Sarah, who now lives in the United States, said that she wanted to work with bonobos, a type of miniature chimp, at a refuge in Iowa. And in order to do so, she had to come to York, to the Department of Linguistics, and learn to use symbols so she could communicate with them. She said to, that the experience was so great she wished she could have just enrolled in York. York taught an award-winning novelist to talk to chimpanzees. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> if, like me, and like the video says, you chose to dance rather than march through life, it's impossible not to get engaged outside of the core functions of your jobs at York. And I'm not alone by a long shot. Many people who work at our university see it as much more than a workplace, and I'm accepting this award on behalf of all of them. Many take the time to participate as volunteer fundraisers or at convocation and in so many other ways, and many of the people who work at York are like me alumni. Several generations of one family work at York and send their children back to school there. 
However difficult things can be, and no matter how much work remains to do at the end of the day, we all know we're working for something positive and something bigger and more important than ourselves. There's a big payoff at the end of every year, the honey, because at Convocation we have the pleasure of seeing students and their families who represent in every way, not the Canada of the 60s, but the Canada of right now and of the future as they celebrate their success. And we all feel like we're a little bit a part of that. So in conclusion, some words of gratitude. Thanks to all of the many York people with whom I've had the chance to work, presidents, vice presidents, and deans, some of who are now presidents of their own universities, governors, senators, volunteers, faculty and staff, alumni, and students. Thank you to the stellar legal and governance team and administrative professionals in my office, including those wonderful colleagues who nominated me and who are here tonight, and to my assistant, Kelly Glaze, who's been with me since the very beginning. Thank you to my family, and particularly my husband, Eldon Bennett, class of 68, who was responsible for quite a lot of my experiential education. <laughs> Both way back when and now, in the 40 odd years since. So if the day ever comes when I am asked to fill out a satisfaction survey about York, I'll do it, and I'll say without hesitation, that working at York has been a lifelong learning experience that has deeply enriched my life. Thank you so much.